hi, I'm Emma Isaacs and I'm the CEO of Business Chicks and I'm really excited today to be having a chat with the gorgeous Kathy Burke who's the CEO of The Hunger Project Australia. Tell, tell us a bit about The Hunger Project, about your work, how long you've been with the organisation for? The Hunger Project, well basically we, we're about ending world hunger and we exist fundamentally because we believe that people, particularly the hungry, well everyone is extraordinary but it's the, the hungry themselves, the poor, the marginalised and women who will play the leading role to end hunger. So our, our work is how do you unlock their capacity, their entrepreneurialism, their leadership, their strength, so that they can feed themselves and their families. And we do that around 12 countries around the world. And It's a different sort of way of looking at things though, isn't it, the Hunger Project? It's not about charity and just giving for giving's sake. It's very much around mindset. So can you tell us a bit more about your methodology? Yeah, like, and yeah so... People who live in hunger are profoundly resigned. They're, they have no, um, so they've always been hungry, they're hungry now, and their future is just an extension of that yeah. past. And people are hopeless, they can feel Allah has deserted us, uh, government has abandoned us, the charity was there for a bit and then it's gone. People are really resigned, they're cynical. So it's, it's, it's interrupting that that mindset um, is really key because you could put any kind of program in but if people fundamentally believe that it's not going to work and they feel cynical about it it just isn't going to work and we know that from our own sake we're all human beings whether you're a village woman or a you know ceo of business chick so so we have a whole bunch of different stuff that we do around that uh, we only have local people working in the country and, and it really it's a movement. It's, it is millions and millions of people involved who wake up every morning and, and just get on with bringing people together. Some women go door to door. They may have killed their own daughter through infanticide, but then they, 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 they start to speak out and they start to talk about the value of girls and start to change culture and practices in communities. And these are people you'll never hear of, but this is happening. And I first got involved, actually, I was thinking this the other day, it's 20 years to, right? to, the, to this year when I did my first trip, like you're coming to Uganda, mine was to Ethiopia in 1992. That's right. Yeah, and that, that started for me this incredible odyssey of um, redefining my life as bigger than just my own, mm. my own you know, my own bits and bobs and I was, had a young daughter and everything and to actually being someone who could make a difference in the world and make a meaningful impact even though um, I wasn't, you know, head of the UN or whatever. So you, you talked about yourself when you went on your first trip, you had a young family, did you just have the one child at that, at yeah. that point? And do you see that as being a big barrier? I didn't of? actually, um, and in fact I went with Steve, my husband as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like she was nearly two, our daughter Bronnie, and I just felt and look, I knew she'd be okay. I had family and support and people who could, you know, help her. I was only going to be gone for less than two weeks. Mm. I just I just felt I needed to be there. Mm. And then within that bigger commitment, I managed to, you know, she was taking... She had a great time. I think... I can't remember what she did, actually. I think she was with my mum and yeah, had fine. ice cream every day. <laughs> yeah. And I think she was totally fine. I had more fun, fun with them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Them. So, and then I came back and, and that journey really, as I said, set off something and... and um, since been away many, many times, and that's just part of having a mum who's yeah. turned on and up to stuff. And when yeah. I'm there, I'm there. And How do people rationalise if they're on this trajectory of ambition and sort of capitalism here? How do you rationalise that with, and have you had experience with people who have been on that path and gone and done these trips and their lives have been transformed and taken in a new direction? Direction. How how has that played out for some of the people? Yeah. Um, Sometimes it, it does vary for different people. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm a classic example, actually, of someone I used to work in politics. Yeah. Um, then I was running my own small business, which was really successful. And I ended up then being a full-on volunteer after being in Ethiopia and doing other travel subsequently with Hunger Project as a volunteer. I used to give lots of my own money. And then I eventually went on staff, So, mm -hmm. which wasn't the way I was going to head up. So, mm -hmm. And then we have people who who go and then they feel more passionate and committed to even making more money, being more successful. It gives them mm. a bigger why to be... Because, yeah. you know, especially when you've been in business, people can lose the hunger for it. Yeah. You know, you've got a nice house, you've got a car, or you've got what, what. It's comfy. And it's yeah. like, well, what else? What's, where's my stretch? Mm. Or if you're new in your um, 
career or your business and money's a bit tight, it is a, it is a stretch to be able to go, but then this is certainly my experience that you start to see how how money is just energy and, and you can expect you can actually grow it to what you need and, and then shrinks to what you don't need and you have a whole new relationship around time and money. You're going to come on the Ugandan business chips immersion trip. Yeah. How come? How come? I suppose, like I said to you before, I've been looking for a way to make an impact, you know, that is bigger than myself. I feel like I spend a lot of time, you know, doing the same things day in, day out and it's very, very easy to get in a bit of a rut of being perhaps ungrateful and being, you know, almost unaware of how good you've got it in life. So for me, it is just about, um, you know, to be honest, it really, it really scares me. Like it's a big, it's a big deal, right? I've got two young girls, I've got a two year old and a six month old and, you know, to be away from them for a couple of weeks or 10 days or how long it's going to end up being. Um, you know, is a big ask. Um, you know, the fundraising efforts, I've got a really big task on my hands with the Business Chicks business this year and the goals we've undertaken. So, um, you know, to, to raise that amount of money, we're asking, you know, for me to raise at least 10 grand and for everyone who participates to raise 10 grand. So that's a really big stretch. Um, and it's going to take me kind of getting beyond myself to be able to do that. And that's a challenge. But I'm always just up for anything that scares me, I suppose, and puts me outside of that. And what can people expect from going on one of these leadership trips if they're interested in coming with us? Well, um, there's two different trips. So one's to Bangladesh, and that's going to coincide with National Girl Child Day. And National Girl Child Day was created by the Hunger Project and then taken on as a countrywide thing. Because girls are so undervalued that it's a disaster when, especially a second daughter is born and they get married off early and so we're wanting to change the way that girls are perceived by that they're, you know, so the whole purpose is to let's celebrate our daughters, let's love them, let's educate them, they can actually be a benefit to the family. And so the business, that trip to Bangladesh is really gonna, that'll be the, the centre of around that. We'll spend time in villages in, Bang, in, in Uganda, uh, we'll be going out to what we call epicentres, where we work, and we'll be spending time with women who are running a bank, uh, really with women entrepreneurs, basically. Um, and it's going to be fun sitting with them, literally in the dirt, and just, and understanding how they run their little mm. their little pig farming operation with two pigs, or their little mm. donut making operation. And you know, you'll be able to share what you do. But it's more, um, I guess, that the DNA or the feelings, the yearnings that we all have that get us into business in the first place, they're universal. Mm. Uh, you want you you want you like the challenge. You want to provide for your family. Mm -hmm. So there'll be aspects of learning um, from the women that we we work with. Um, but what's going to be also really great is that us as women, it's really for people who want to lift the lid off what's possible for you in your own life as well. So. Um, we have our own limiting sets of beliefs, sure. understandings. We can be resigned and cynical about stuff as well, and it keeps us playing small. So we're going to have some days where really it's working with us. There'll be 20 awesome women. We'll have a facilitator with us as well, working on our dreams, our goals, uh, in the in the space of, well, if we've seen these women, what they're capable of, what are we capable of? Yeah. So it's really if you're wanting to lift the lid on being extraordinary, really. Yeah. And, yeah, that's that would be the trip for you. Yeah, that's fantastic. You're all going to go to the Gandon Business Chicks Emotional Leadership Trip. <laughs>